Hello and welcome to today's webinar on top tips for combining computing and art. My name is Wendy Piccinini and I am the CAS Community Outreach Manager for communities across London and the East of England and I am the host for this session. This webinar is part of the CAS Inspire series. CAS Inspire is a series of resources consisting of live webinars with expert panelists discussing topical computing education matters in which the audience can get involved. Also featured are videos teaching computing concepts, podcasts and careers inspiration webinars. During the session, please use the question window, which is on the right hand side of your screen to ask questions. All attendees are in listen only mode. The top of the window has an orange rectangle which can be expanded or collapsed. If you would like to download a copy of this afternoon's presentation, this is available under the handout section. If using social media, the hashtag for the event is hashtag CASINSPIRE20. During the webinar, please type any questions into the question window and there'll be breaks during the webinar when questions will be read out to our presenter. Without further ado, let me introduce you to Rachel Vidler, who is our presenter for this afternoon. Rachel is a qualified teacher with a wealth of experience in computing and using technology in the classroom. Her experience in schools led her to work as a subject matter expert for STEM learning and the National Centre for Computing Education, offering guidance and training for primary schools nationally, alongside facilitating CPD courses. Supporting computing at school as a community leader, Rachel aims to keep on top of the ever-changing aspects of technology and computing. She's also a Raspberry Pi certified teacher, Apple teacher and Seesaw ambassador. I'm now going to hand over to Rachel. Right, uh, thank you, Wendy. So, um, great introduction there. It makes me sound like I know what I'm doing quite a bit. Um, what we're gonna do today is we are going to go through some top tips for combining computing or combining technology, more should I say, and art. Um, like Wendy said, what you will find is you've got all the handouts on the side. So basically the handout that I've gave you to, given you today is the exact slides um, that I'm gonna show you today. So. If there's anything, if you want any details on any of the apps or any uh, photos or anything that we've kind of did, please do download them within the session so you've got them to keep. Share them with your school, share them with your SLT, you know, they're yours to kind of take. Um, what you'll see on here, like I said, social media, if you want to post anything or anything that you've made in the future, please use that hashtag. And there's just my Twitter handle on there. So if after today you have any questions, then do feel free to ping them in there. As I'm talking, if you've got anything as we're going along, do please put it in the chat and um, I'll try and endeavour to answer anything as we're going. Um, so basically what we're going to try and cover today across this session and so we've got roughly like an hour or so with some questions at the end is I've tried to put together a slideshow of basically how you can kind of integrate technology into your classrooms and into your art lessons okay so it's going to be um, not just how you can do digital art but almost how you can incorporate it in a multimedia kind of thing so you can take some technology into your lessons but then also uh, use your skills of drawing and painting on top and kind of incorporate that there um, I'm then also going to kind of Point you in the direction of some different digital art units uh, and certainly some free resources and free schemes of work that have been done recently by the National Centre for Computing so I'll put on some links to some different pages there and then lastly you know all throughout to be fair it's going to talk about a few different applications so um, there's twofold on this there are some iPad apps or tablet apps should I say if you've got those kind of if you're lucky enough to have that technology in your school but also there's some links to some website based stuff as well so don't feel like oh, we haven't got iPads we can't access it because hopefully that's not the point but we're going to kind of do a variation of a few different things um, so before I begin I just want to kind of talk about the national curriculum briefly and I guess really you could be joining us today from two different perspectives. We might have computing leads here who are hopefully going to take away some ideas that they can go and work with their art subject leader of how you can integrate the um, subject of computing, or we might just have art people. Um, 
one thing I want to do just as an overview, and if you joined us in my English one last week, I would have kind of explained the same, is more so if you've joined us from computing, it's just about how you can kind of break down that curriculum. And I do apologise if you've kind of seen this model before, you know, this isn't something I've invented, this is something that's been out there. But actually, with regards to how you teach computing, it can be quite helpful, certainly to explain to staff in your school the way and the content and which units you do. So basically, when you teach computing, you can you can kind of cut it down into these three strands. You've got computer science, which is your programming, your coding, your algorithm writing, and all those kind of things. That's not going to be a focus of today. Um, I am doing a session next week, or I think it's next week, or there's more on the Inspire thing with uh, concepts before coding and looking at computer science. You then have information technology, which is kind of split down into software and actually making things, and that's what we're going to look at more today. And then you've got your online safety, which is another strand which should underpin really most of your practices that you're doing online. So if you want to kind of take this from a computer need perspective today, these are your two national statement, uh, national curriculum statements. So one at Key Stage 1 and one at Key Stage 2, which basically just summarise the fact that you're using technology purposefully to create something. OK, and that can really hit your art objectives. So you can kind of take this computing um, statement here and incorporate it into any art and design work where you're using technology. And as a primary teacher myself, it's a bit about being creative in how you uh, design your units, because obviously we have no time in the curriculum to hit all the subjects. So if you can incorporate the two in some of the activities that I'm going to suggest today, today it's just going to make your life a little bit easier. Um, just thought I'd put up the art objectives. I'm sure if you're joining as an art subject leader, you'll probably be just as frustrated as I am as a computing subject leader that your national curriculum is incredibly vague and there is not a lot there. Okay, so again, this can be used speculatively with what we're going to show you today. Um, you know, different media, different ways of designing stuff, different techniques. Obviously, that can all hit with regards to IT. Uh, range of different artists. We're going to look at a few different ones in this session and again, how you could use technology to recreate those. So there isn't any things specifically in here that says use technology uh, but one thing I do think is a really important thing is is when you look at digital artists moving forward and I guess this comes down to I don't want to mention Ofsted but if you do look at Ofsted when you create your subject you're looking at intent and with intent you're looking at the cultural capital of your pupils and more importantly for me I think certainly with technology is you're looking at where these pupils need to go at the end of their journey in education and actually if you look at art as a whole as a subject so much more of it now is moving online you know I know people who have made careers from making things online digital artists now so the fact that you can kind of incorporate this at a primary level giving them the basic skills of how to utilize technology for art it's only going to hopefully progress them in their schooling and their career. So it doesn't specifically say in the national curriculum that you need to use technology, but I would just take it as another medium in the world that we're living in today of how you can kind of use it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is a few different tablet based applications. So these are going to be iPad based apps um, for doing art and there are loads out there. What I've tried to pull today are free apps, so it's not going to cost you anything um, and probably the best ones that I've seen. This isn't all of the apps. There may be ones that you use in school uh, for different purposes. I've just kind of kind of got the top three that I would recommend, okay? If you use other ones, there are more that I had on this list that I kind of cut down, but I think it's like anything. If you Google drawing on iPad on the App Store, you get a million apps. So it's trying to point you in the direction of the best ones and how they could be used. Um, the first one I probably recommend is an app called Artset. Uh, there's a free version and there's a paid version. The paid version is like $2.99. So personally, again, I know I've worked in a primary school. Budgets are non-existent, so I'm not trying to say buy an app. If you want to look at it personally, you can. The free one does quite a lot. Okay. This is one that I'd recommend. It's probably one of the most realistic apps if you actually want to do drawing on an iPad. Okay. And the reason that I say that is what you'll see here just on the on your screen is you have a variety of different mediums. Um, and actually what you can see there, hopefully zoomed in, but I will obviously show you on the next page as well, is when you explore with those different mediums, it's probably the most realistic exploration without getting all those physical equipment out for children. So if you are in a school where you haven't got watercolours and pastels and markers and felt tips and pens and crayons, this app here is brilliant for mark making. OK, it gives you the opportunity or gives the children the opportunity to look at the difference between those different mediums and actually see what they are. And when I was playing around with it, like you might see on the screen here, the watercolours in comparison to just the marker look completely different. So it's quite a nice one for sketching. Um, like I say, this kind of stuff, mark making, where we do this off the page already in art, where we're looking at different techniques for mark making. And obviously this is just with um, a variety of different mediums. You can very much do this on this app. It's one lesson that I've kind of done with pupils just after we've done it on 
using physical stuff mark making i've then taken it online and said can you look at the same thing so it's one of the things that i like with this one that you can change the paper background as well so you can change it from different textures but actually it's probably the most effective that brings up what a watercolor looks like on paper what a marker looks like on paper what a paint looks like so it's just really nice that you can have that comparison between the different mediums without actually getting them all out and i know certainly in lower key stage two uh, time restraints and things like that to get all the different mediums out in one session is quite hard this is just a nice way to compare them on an ipad okay and with the beauty of this as well you can zoom in zoom out you can see quite in detail the different effects they're going to get so i used to do evaluations and then they would ch choose one medium to kind of use for their art and then also there's an evaluation there between screen and real does it actually give the same effect so that's just one nice realistic kind of art based app there's two more that I kind of recommend after that. The next one is um, sketches. OK, there are two versions of this. There's sketches on its own and there's sketches school. Um, this is just a really simple app. I've seen this used in Key Stage 1 for drawing. Um, you literally come up with a blank notebook. So it gives you the option to sketch. And on this, they have near enough every tool that you'll need. So they have all the normal ones that you would have found on that other app. Um, like pencils, pens, pastels, airbrushes, watercolours and all that kind of stuff. Uh, really simple for them to pick, pick, again, pick a different medium and actually have a go at drawing. Uh, but what I quite like with the, this is these extra settings that you get on here. Um, so you have the option for shapes. If you want to actually start to look at objects and building different shapes into your thing, which we'll look at a little bit later in some of the units, you've got that. Uh, you have this nice tool here, which is kind of nice for Key Stage 1, um, which is like a paint roller. So it means they can draw a shape and it automatically colours it in. Uh, I did some digital art last Friday, which I haven't included in here because it was so recent. I tweeted about it. Uh, Keynote does the same kind of thing on Apple, which is really nice. So you can draw a shape, you can draw a cloud and it will automatically fill it in with a colour, which is really nice for like fine motor skills for the younger children. Uh, you got the option to fill as well again so if you're looking at shapes again for those basic stuff for key stage one that they can pick a color and they can just fill it in um smudging again if you want to look at watercolor and effects like that's quite nice and then you have the ruler option for drawing shapes and you've got cutters so you can copy and paste different shapes quite ni nice and easily okay a lot of these things that i'm going to say on this app you can do on many others you can do them on keynote you can do them on lots of different apps but just for ease i think sketches is probably one of the most simple apps for primary school children to pick up and use and like i said these are for key stage one pupils and they can kind of pick it up and go um and then the last app which i'm probably going to touch on more with some of the activities which is a bit more in depth is adobe illustrator okay i used to use an app called brushes redux uh, but adobe really is just better the one downside with this is that um, you have to have an account. So it's absolutely free. And what I would suggest is Adobe does lots of educational licenses and free accounts so you can do that way. Or what I do within school is just make an account and sign those iPads on as a class account. So I normally use my teacher, my email address for my school, um, sign up to an email account that way and log all the iPads in with just a generic password for that. OK, so when they come on, they're logged in. It means it stores it all on a cloud based platform, so you're not going to use it as well. Um, and I will show you some of the skills that I'd use on Adobe because basically the way I use this is it's really good for layering. So it's good to put in photographs as your base layer, which then means it opens up the skills of layering and it opens up the skills of tracing, which are the two next things I'm going to talk about. So again, I'm not saying this is the only app you have to use because I very much before I did, before I found this one, I used Brushes Redux. There's lots of different ones that you can use. This is just kind of my guidance, I would guess. So the first part of this session, I'm just going to look at actually how you can incorporate technology. Uh, so tablet based, mainly tablet based to actually build skills within a unit. So it's not necessarily going, we're going to do a whole digital unit, but it's kind of incorporating it into other pieces of art as well. Um, so there's two key skills that I've mentioned that I kind of look at. The first is layering. So you kind of have this effect if you want to do it in physical media within art, where you can use stuff like collages and stuff like that. But um, and I guess to some extent shading, but if you've drawn something on a piece of paper, you've got your drawing. It doesn't necessarily give you the skill of layering within drawing. You can use it when you're uh, looking at drawn faces and you've got your shapes and you're doing your cross points to make sure that you get your features in the right place. But this is what you can do on an iPad and on an iPad, it opens up so much more. So you can have different layers of different things. You can then delete, you can change, you can manipulate them. So for drawing, digitally it opens up so much more and i think actually teaching them how to layer in a skill is something that's really worthwhile doing as a unit so adobe illustrator is probably the best one of this and what i mean by layers is when you come on you have you have your background or you have a layer that you want and on this plus button here you can have as many as you want 
So it kind of revolutionizes the way of drawing for children because if you think about drawing on a piece of art, if you layer your background and you paint your whole piece of paper blue, you draw on top, if you make a mistake, that's your piece of art ruined. Whereas what you can teach them te using technology is they can do their background layer of just a blue background, then they can have a plus layer. On their plus layer, they could then draw their clouds, okay? If they go wrong, they can delete that whole layer and they haven't ruined their background. They can draw another layer on top, which they could then be the house. So it just allows them to have different sections of art. It takes away that, um, I find with pupils, a lot of the stuff of art is that they're worried of making a mistake. And using technology in this way to layer on top means that if they go wrong, they can just take one whole lot out without ruining their whole picture. Um, so what you'll see here though, and what I really like with this option with Adobe Illustrator, is when you press the plus to add a new layer, you can either draw it or you can use an image. So when I first introduce the skill of layering, what I normally do is I just take a picture. So I ask the children to take a selfie, take a picture of themselves and they can put it on here, okay? Um, what you can do with this layer is if you click on it again, you can also change the opacity. So you can make it more see-through, which is quite nice for them to do. So here you'll see that it stands out quite a lot. You can remove that, make it thinner. And we'll look at that a little bit later on tracing because that's quite a cool tool. Um, Again, this is just a nice task that you can do. So then what I normally ask them to do is do a say, selfie. So take a selfie, this is their base layer, and then they explore with drawing over the top. Okay, I normally don't give them much more guidance than that, and it is just a bit of an exploration. So quite a nice introductory activity to the task as well. Um, it allows them to explore mark making, it allows them to explore the opacity again on this side and the different colours, because what you'll see here is you might not want to see your face, you might want to block your whole face out, you might want to have that style where you can still see it. And it's kind of, again, just this evaluation based um, discussion of precision work and what they can see and how they're going to fill in different areas. But it kind of introduces the fact to them that they can layer. And again, once they've done a base layer here, if I've coloured in my face, they could do another layer on top. So it's just trying to get them to explore that. And this isn't mine. This is someone who's a great artist, so I follow on Twitter. Um, this is just an example of what the children then could produce. OK, depending on their age range and what you want. If you've got young children, you could just do it as a pop art topic where they're going to colour in their face one colour and their hair are different, but they're going to have a layer, different layer for each one. If you've got children a bit older, there's no reason why you can't show them a picture like this and say this is going to be our own project, where they're going to look at tone, they're going to look at colours, they're going to look at lines or detail and have something that starts to produce like this. And this is all based on a photo. So for me, you know, with children, it takes out the need for having to draw that face in the first place. You've got your background, you've got your inspiration that you're going to draw on top. And now we're just going to look at layering and designing our own. So, again, taking it into a piece of work, this is one that we've done in a school before, and you'll see here that the art produced actually looks pretty good. Um, we were doing this as part of an architecture unit, so we were taking drawings and we did not draw these, so we did layers. So for each of these photos, we just went on the internet, we screenshot some Greek architecture because it's part of our Greek topic. Um, they uploaded them into Adobe Illustrator, they set that as a background. They changed around with their opacity so they could see see clearly enough to draw on top and then they did their outlines so what you start to get here is some some really effective artwork but they haven't had to do the drawing they have just layered on top with different effects and different colors it looks effective and it takes away that scariness of i've got to draw okay so again we zoomed in on different aspects it could be incorporated in a history unit or an art unit like this but this was all digitally produced art just drawing on top of a picture that was already there and then manipulating it so it's quite a nice trick if you want to use it like that, that they can kind of have a base layer of photo and draw on top. It's really nice. I saw something on Twitter today uh, of someone just doing it with EYFS with a police car. So it was an EYFS unit. They did the picture, the base layer of a, of a police car, and then the children just tried to draw on top. OK, it, it's a nice introductory skill. Um, the second skill, obviously, you can do with this layering is tracing as well okay now tracing seems like a simple enough skill but actually it's quite engaging pupils like it they get um good results from it which is probably why they like it because once they take the picture away it looks like they've drawn a pretty um a pretty good picture yes okay they haven't drawn it themselves so with the skill of art they're not having to look at perspective themselves and do it but they're having to look at construction they're having to look at edges uh contours following it and being quite precise in their drawings so it is quite a nice thing to do. Again, it's a unit that I used to do, just the odd few lessons, depending on what our topic was and tying it in here. This one was just a child in a break, so I'm playing around and drawing a Pokemon. And again, this looks really cool. It looks like they've sketched it, but what they've done is they've had a second layer here of a background image. They've drawn it and then they've removed the background. 
okay it is really nice skill for those pupils who struggle you know snd pupils or pupils that actually if you've got a class and they're frightened at first to put pen to paper and to put mark on this is just a way to introduce them where they can have this skill of tracing and i think it has lots of values in producing some nicer art and certainly digitally this is the way that people are moving forward you know this is a skill that artists out there can do they can take other pictures in and trace them and use that within their art um so one more here that i'm not going to necessarily go through and talk through now but i'll leave this link on here this is a guy that i just stumbled upon again on twitter um and he's made a video just of how you can create clip art and avatars basically using adobe illustrator and again what you'll see here this is just a three step i've just screenshotted three different images from it uh where basically they've taken a photo they've edited this in as their base layer and what you can do then on this app is you can zoom in you can zoom out uh they've just taken a pen and they've just done their outlines okay and they've just done this as separate layers so it isn't hard for children to trace around it uh, on here as well if you click the shapes you've got different shapes and you've got rulers so you can use the rulers quite a nice again like the sketches app at key stage one you can uh, you can expand on it at key stage two with this app where they can use rulers draw around it use the fill tool and this is your end product okay and this guy here kind of says how actually he uses then this animations on his website so any animations or any pictures that he's drawn on his website he creates his own which is quite a nice way when you're talking with children certainly up a key stage two in copyright it's a way to get around it you know if you want a picture of an ipad but you've got copyright issues when you're going to go and save one you could draw your own and all they need to do is save a picture of an ipad put it in as a base layer and draw it so if they're doing non-chronological reports, you know, tie it into cross-curricular learning. If you're looking at the Stone Age and they're doing non-chronological reports and they're producing that and typing it up, why can't they then go and create their own animations to be included in their report that they're going to post? And it is not that hard. You know, this link here will take you to a YouTube video where he follows it. Another YouTube video or on that YouTube video, what you'll see, uh, again, a, lot, a little bit like with the selfies, which is really nice. You take a picture of yourself. You draw around the outline you can block fill you can draw in your hair and again what he'll explain on that video is how you can use different layers so it's again breaking the composition down to pupils that they haven't got to draw the whole picture all at once they can layer up the background they can layer up the hands they can layer up the face they can layer up the hair and again it just removes that um that barrier of if i make a mistake that's it and that's what i find the most frustrating or what i used to find the most frustrating in schools was with art they were reluctant because if they made an issue if they made a mistake on paper that was the end of their project it doesn't work like that digitally they can just remove that layer and start again so certainly it's a really nice skill to teach those two skills go kind of hand in hand with tracing and layering and using that adobe illustrator is really nice um and then this picture here i just wanted to kind of illustrate that again you can do this as a standalone unit we could do it as a unit that we're going to make animations or we're going to we're just going to do it as a selfie but what you'll see here was this was when we went full multimedia so they'd already created their actual piece in print as part of a nature unit so they designed that and they painted it and then what we said was we went okay well this is our final product here we don't want to muck around with this project we don't want to ruin it but what we want to do is explore different colors or explore different textures or actually i might want to change something so we used the adobe illustrator we took a picture of our actual piece of art we then traced around it and then it gave us the freedom to play around with color to play around with different designs so we'd already made something on print and then we wanted to explore it. We just used that technology there to give us that option. OK, it's already done in acrylic. We can muck around with it, though, digitally afterwards. And like you'll see here, they then experimented with putting different designs in and playing around. If that's something that they liked the idea of using that piece of technology, they could then take that back into their art. So it's not about having what I see in a lot of places is they you go to schools and they have units which are purely digital. But it's about thinking, actually, if it's a skill of tracing and we've done something in actual print, we could pull that back in and make another media version. So it's just a nice way to kind of incorporate it there. Um, the next thing that I'm going to kind of talk about is camera. Uh, and this is something that I don't necessarily do full digital photography units. There are stuff out there, but there's certainly quite a few different ways you can use the camera. Um, so the first thing that you can kind of look at if you wanted to is if you had a, a bigger piece of artwork, you can look at composition and structure. Uh, taking iPads or taking phones and stuff like that, 
it's quite nice to take a large piece of artwork, especially if you can put it on the board or you can zoom or you can print it off on A3 or on a large scale. Um, it's nice for them to use to look at perspective just with zoom and cameras. It's kind of like seeing when you look at art. I know that teachers do this and I used to be bad for it as a teacher. If I was looking at a piece of art, I used to normally cut it down for the pupils. I used to say, OK, well, this is a picture of the planets and I want you just to focus on this planet. And I almost used to zoom in on my board and give them the pieces before. But actually, it doesn't allow the children to construct any new images themselves. I'm doing it for them. So it's quite nice if you've got iPads to almost take a bigger piece of art and say, I want you to create some small ones from it. You know, you could have that with specific learning intentions if you want. You could ask them to look at diagonal lines or different surfaces or stuff like that. But it just allows the people to look into the images themselves, certainly if they've got cameras before you do it. The same with a still image. You know, you could have a still image on the board, but you could say, I want you to draw just a part of it. I used to be guilty for section it off myself into grids and giving them a piece for them to draw. This just allows them to kind of explore and look into that themselves and giving them that independence for what part of the image are they going to choose to draw and why. So in the simplest sense, that's one of the things you could do. Um, this wasn't mine, this was I wasn't mine, this is something that I stumbled upon, upon again, good practice, which I really liked. It's something I want to try with one of my classes, but yet to do so. Um, and I never really thought about it too much. It's using light and photography. So we always go, you know, a lot of primary school teachers will go, yeah, we'll use the camera to go and take photos and look at what you can do with photography, which I'll obviously talk about a little bit later. But I saw this where they just use iPads or phones with a torch. Um, and it was really nice. So again, it's that collaborative practice. If you're doing part of a nature or stone age, you could tie this in or, or something like that. Um, they went outside, simplest thing, picked a load of different leaves and stuff like that. They came in and made their, their pieces like this. So again, white piece of paper on the floor and just taking uh, shining your light. And then with the iPad here, they took photos. So it's quite a nice thing about positive and negative lights and shadows and composition and stuff like that, where they worked together. Then what they did on this unit, which I really liked, was this multimedia part. So again, it's not just saying we've done some technology, we're using technology for a digital project. They pulled back in their drawing skills or they pulled back in different foci that they were already looking at in their art. Um, and what they did is they looked through all their pictures and then they printed some off. So the children have used or they've done this part. They've moved the shadows, they've looked at composition, they've designed, and they probably, what children will do is take them 50 images, no doubt. Uh, they then can analyse those images and they can choose one to print off to have as their piece. So what this school did, which I thought was really interesting, was they printed those. Like I said here, if you can print them on cartridge paper, even better. And then they used those in a multimedia way to then create another image. So be that collage in, was that shading, they had oil pastels, they had paint, they had abs absolutely everything. So then incorporate the, the digital image of that shadow that they'd already taken and use and manipulate it with actual multimedia and, and equipment as well, which I thought was quite nice. So using the technology in the first place with the, with the torch to create your own photography, you could leave it here just as photography, or you could print it off look at different pieces of media and then again make two variations of a picture and that gives you that chance again certainly in upper key stage two level to evaluate whether you just want to leave it as photography or what's the benefits of printing it off and when you go and look at art and investigate art you'll find out with lots of artists that they don't choose one type of media um, another really similar one again from the same school which i thought was brilliant same same concepts uh, but they did it with chicken wire and I thought, actually, I've used chicken wire before uh, for sculpture, certainly in primary schools, but I never thought to look at it this way. So again, corner of a room, bit of a darkened room, you've got iPads, you've got flashes on iPads, you've got iPads to take photos, just incorporate the two here. So they looked at creating different sculptures. So this one was just people here, time really nice with a year four unit if you're doing the body or something like that. But it could be that you want them to create a chicken wire stonehenge and then you look at how that reflects with light and image, it can be on absolutely anything. Uh, but what I thought was really nice here is it's just a nice way to teach photography. It's a nice way to teach angles, you know, and light and shadow. If you're doing light and shadow in year three, this could be a, something that ties in really well with your science unit, for argument's sake. And then you've got science, you've got art, and you've got computer and all in one kind of topic. Uh, but they looked at projection, they looked at size, they looked at perspective, um, they looked at how you can make your shadows longer and, and narrower, which again is a great science kind of teaching point there. And again, they took photos to then see what the shadows reflected. So the, the photography skills that you kind of get out of this and what you'll get, again, look really effective. And what I really liked is there's that still that option for multimedia. Once you've taken those photos using the flash, using your iPad to gather those pictures, it's what you do with it afterwards. So what they chose to do here was print them off, 
and then as you can see using pastels using paint you could kind of incorporate that and make that into like a pop art style piece or anything you want really but using that as the basis for your drawing so it's just another really nice way to kind of use light and shadow which would tie in really well with some science units out there certainly at primary level uh, and then the other option that you've got with cameras is that you can do photography units if you want to. Uh, and I think more schools, again, are kind of jumping on this and offering this as part of the unit. Um, it's a different media. It's a different way of art. And it is something that's becoming more paramount at GCSE and, and secondary based stuff. Again, the majority of children have an iPad or ho at home or an iPhone at home. So it's something that they are actually looking into. Um, if you've got iPads or you've got cameras, what you'll find which is really nice is you've kind of got a live camera so again teaching them the skills of that when they actually go on you can tap to focus if you tap you'll see a little sun so you can uh you can start to experiment with brightness and teach them what brightness means they can manipulate the photo moving it up or down uh, and then also on ipad they can turn a grid on i'm going to show you another app right at the end for grid work but they can show they can turn the grid on to look at actually where your object is going to be with with terms of perspective so this was just an example here that you know in school again how many teachers have done still life drawings they've brought in fruit or they've, or they've brought in something set it up and they've asked children to draw it this just kind of puts that perspective back with the children first so i would then just use a load of ipads get them to look at composition get them to look at how perspective changes get them to look at moving closer or further away um you can obviously use zoom you zoom in and out but it's quite nice for them to actually do it and manipulate the camera and look around and see how it changes and then what they will see is they've got a variety of photos on their iPad that they've, they've looked at for composition, then get them to draw one of them. So incorporate into a still unit piece where then they can take that and they can actually draw it afterwards. But they've, desi they've, they've decided on the aspect that they're going to draw. You know, and, and this is stuff that I was guilty of. I used to just give this to pupils. But if you've got the technology in your school, give them the independence to take the photos themselves. They'll be much more engaged than use that photo within their drawing. So just an example there, if you've got the technology, lay out some different stuff, get them to take the photos, get them to make it and then incorporate that into your multimedia. They've taken the photo, they could then draw it. And again, if you want to use that skill of tracing for your lower ability children or children with SEN, there's no reason why you can't print off those drawings and use it as a tracing option. But, you know, you want them to be doing some kind of drawing as well. Um, and then one more really with regards to the camera is um, photography and taking photos is just as relevant so you know if you've got uh, if you've got ipads or stuff like that you can do different photography hunts so here just part of a nature topic it was the natural world it was asking them to go and, and use their photography skills and take different pictures looking at camera angles looking at up close macro micro landscape different stuff like that and again if you want to you can always have that uh, certainly of upper key stage two those kind of art foci like underpinning it so here it was looking at lines they had different tasks they needed to find pictures which which um in the natural world which showed different shape different form space art line texture and they came back with stuff like that um, and basically this opened up a bit of a dialogue when you're looking at photos because they found that they couldn't find one of those things, you know, they had lots of different elements. So where they did have plants with line, it also had a shape and stuff like that. So it was just part of a, a topic on plants to go and get them to use their photography skills out in the out in the school environment to come back with pictures. And again, you can get like there's an example here. This is just then using an app called Pick Collage or any collage based app where they can put them together uh print that off going in their art books or put it on a remote learning platform if you've got something like that like seesaw or google classroom kind of storing that um but this is just an example of again just a bit different way of rather than saying take a photo of this send them on that hunt and what they could be done younger ones you could have this key stage one basic ones taking photos of stuff that begins with a different letter but thinking about the composition of photos uh you could do it as different colors so if you're going to do color mixing in class and you're looking at primary colors as one of your activities and then secondary colors you can incorporate photography there get them to go and take photos of things that have those or have those colors in um but basically it's just getting them to look at their photography in a different way um so yeah if you do want to do some photography units, um, there is some stuff out there already. So if you haven't seen this, I've put links on here. So these links will be in the handout if you choose to download that. Uh, the NCC, if you haven't heard of them, the National Center for Computing, they have uh, written curriculums from Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 4. 
all on computing topics and like I said right at the beginning the computing curriculum can be broken down into different strands so what you'll see here is the IT strand like I said is their creating media strand and throughout this they've done different units so what they've done at year two is they've done a digital photography unit so this doesn't exclusively have to be used at year two but it's kind of a starting point I guess for teachers if you're sat there thinking okay this might be quite useful to incorporate the two there's um six lessons which you'll see here which kind of uh, taught for a year two on how to use the camera so they've got one on different design devices landscape uh, what makes good both uh, photograph line and focus effects and then is it real so if you're thinking yeah photography might be something quite nice obviously I've just given you some examples of how you could use it in a handful of lessons maybe across your primary phase but if you want to have a specific unit check out the NCC because for each lesson you get uh, slides you get worksheets and you get handouts and stuff like that and a lesson plan so they've got one at year two and then building on progressively they've got one in key stage two so they've got one in year four and this one's more on photo editing which is really nice because I haven't touched about on it too much in this session and I thought I wasn't going to because the NCCU unit kind of does it here it looks at uh, changing composition so it looks at cropping it looks at um, how where you you have an image within a photograph how it can manipulate and change what your eyes going to see uh, and then it looks at retouching so it uses uh, different apps and different software which you've got and built which a lot of the children will probably know how to do if they're on social media at that age which undoubtedly more of them are now than we would like to be uh, looking at stuff like Instagram and editing images that way and it also looks at fake images which is really nice for your online safety kind of thing if you are looking at online safety as a computer need uh, hopefully you should have heard of a document called education for a connected world within this unit there's a uh, there's a strand on self-image and identity and it's really nice to kind of incorporate fake images and stuff like that in there can you believe everything that you see online so that unit kind of looks at how you can actually do photo manipulation and how you can change images to reflect something that isn't real okay and unfortunately we're living in that uh, culture i teach in my year sixes i um i get photo editing apps like selfie editors where they take a photo and they manipulate it Okay, so that unit there kind of just covers it through, you know, like I say, that's a fully art and um, computing embedded element. Uh, a couple more things what you can do with the camera if you want to have this digital uh, unit where you're using the camera. This is a brilliant app here if you've never heard of it, it is amazing. It's an app called Quiver. Uh, this is the logo that you want to search for online. Um, what Quiver is, is it incorporates augmented reality. OK, so augmented reality is basically where using technology or using iPads, you make something appear in your reality that isn't really there. And you'll have seen it before, like digital designers use it now where they take pictures of rooms and they augment their furniture into the room for them to see. Um, you'll see quick win apps like String, where it used to be that you take a photo and a dragon would pop out of a room or a monster would walk across. Lots of people do it in like dinosaur topics. There's apps where you can make it look like a dinosaur's on the playground. But this app here, Quiver, I really like it. And there's links on the next page that if you if you go on it online, what they do is they give you loads of printouts. So they give you sheets like this. And whenever I show teachers, it's normally the EYFS teachers that go, oh my God, yeah, we're going to use that. Basically what they do is they draw on this box or this picture. I'll show you the next one, I'll come back. They colour in sheets normally. And then when they use the iPad, it makes their creation pop out in front of them. So EYFS teachers absolutely love it because there's stuff like planes and cars for transport and units like that. It's amazing. What you'll see here is this is a bird. They choose to colour it in. And then as soon as they hover, whatever their creations that they've drawn pop out in front of them. So if they had flowers on the wings, it would be on this thing here and it live walks around in front of them. So the kids absolutely love it same here for this shark option so on the link here there's just a youtube video which is a really nice trailer for you to watch and then here's where you'll find the, the coloring packs some of them are free some of them aren't okay but there's quite a lot of nice free ones going back to this page really quickly um the way that i've used it and what i really like is i like using this dot day one and this basically makes a sphere so you'll see here where I used to use it. And if you can see in my art book, although it's quite small on this picture here, uh, this was like a year five unit where we did space. And what we did was we looked at the different planets and we recreated the planets with different mediums. So again, I'd use the iPad at the beginning to explore different mediums on an iPad. We would then actually physically do that. So we'd draw some stuff with felt tips, we'd draw some stuff with oil pastels, watercolors, we'd evaluate which one worked and which one didn't what we could do with each one whether we could smudge whether we couldn't whether we could look at shade and toning and then when they picked one that they'd liked we i then i didn't even tell them it was augmented reality to be honest so you just gave them this printout and i said i want you to do one in bigger 
Okay, if you're using this printout, just make sure that you don't trim the sheet. It needs to be able to see all the edges to then actually turn into an augmented piece. But like you can see here, someone had chosen to do uh, Mars. They used uh, an oil pastel here, they drew it. And then at the end of their unit, once they'd finished, I said, right, get the app and scan it. And they absolutely loved the fact that then it appears in 3D. They could move around, they could see their creation, they could physically do it. So it's just one of those quick wins. It's not something that I'd incorporate into every lesson. But again, it's just a really nice thing. Either use it as that hook for Key Stage 1 and EYFS when they create and stuff. But even in an upper Key Stage 2 classroom, we did it there. And on there, there is loads. There's loads on, if you want to tie into maths, there's loads on 2D shapes and stuff, which I absolutely love because children really struggle how to see, um, you know, vertices and corners and stuff like that they can see it on these apps so it's a really quick win just if you want to use augmented reality within your lesson they can kind of incorporate that and then the last thing here just with regards to the camera again one more like lesson if you've got the stuff this is looking at uh, photography and light so it's maybe more of like a I don't know, key stage two, key stage three, it might be something for the old ones to look at, but uh, looking at shutter speed, if you're actually gonna look at proper cameras. And what I think is it's a really nice teaching point, but it normally means you have to have decent cameras. This up here is called slow shutter cam. Uh, this app you do have to pay for, unfortunately, though that's the one downside. So it might not be something to do, but a lot of schools, like a lot of schools do photography as part of a code club. So if you're doing it with a code club with only a handful of children, it's quite a nice one. Uh, what we did here, then these are spheros. So if you haven't heard of spheros, they're like a robotic ball um, that you can use for coding, which is really nice. Um, they kind of go cross curricular, but here they obviously have different LED lights. So this is where we use the show starter speed and a tripod, or we just set up our camera and we recorded them, we drove them around and recorded them and it gives this nice effect uh, if you don't have spheros there's another thing you can use which is quite nice here because you see this online with people holding sparklers and stuff like that obviously imagine doing that with a load of year five pupils it'd be chaos um there's a free app you can download called color light app well there's loads of different ones out there which is it just turns your ipad into a full screen color app okay so you could have another child waving that around with someone else with a tripod looking at that so if you want to look at shutter speed and how that impacts, if you're going to really dig into photography, you can. But obviously, maybe that's not something you want to massively incorporate at a primary level. So then that's kind of how you can use technology, I guess, in a few ways where you've got different apps for different skills. So looking at tracing and layering and then you've got all your camera stuff that you can do. Uh, the remainder of the session, the last 15 minutes, I'm just going to talk about a few other digital units if you kind of want to do that. Um, so there is uh, stuff you can do on desktop more than anything. If you don't want to have iPads, uh, there's loads again, loads of different apps where you can do drawing online. This is just three of them. So on this handout, you've got the links, which are quite nice at Key Stage One. Um, there's Tiny Sketch, which looks like this. Uh, just again, quite simple. You can still use that Sketches app if you want to at Key Stage One, but this is kind of where you can pick different mediums and do it there. Uh, J2E, I'm sure you might have heard of them already. J2E are really good for doing loads of different stuff. They do databases and coding and stuff like that. They've also got a paint version you can use. And then Tate Paint is done by the uh, Tate Museum. So they've got their own version there, which is like a game and you can have different stamps. So if you want to do that at Key Stage 1, Jackson Pollock, great artist, great to look at because we've I've done this in loads of mediums. Uh, we used to do this in the hall where we used to take in uh, paintbrushes and actually splatter art. Uh, we've done it with spheros, which I'll show you on another page. But again, it's a really nice one to do online. Nice one with Key Stage 2 because there's no right or wrong. It is all just that creative and that's what art should be, subjective. Um, but again, then you can start to look at which tool was most effective. Was it easier drawing on a computer or not? If you're doing it on a computer, it's quite nice to, if you can, to have mouse, mice as well. So give them the option to use a mouse, to use a trackpad, or to use an iPad, and then kind of evaluate the few, the, the, the different ones. So there's that option. And again, if you want to look at digital painting as a whole unit using laptops, uh, the NCC do a unit at year one. So the link's on there, and this is one of the pieces of art that they get them to you do, which is quite nice. This is just about drawing lines and then filling in, um, fill blocking stuff with paint. Uh, again, there's six lessons here. So using shapes and lines, choices, why to choose that, and then painting by myself. So if you want to use that as your six lessons, what I do say with the NCCE is um, they give you six lessons. You can condense it into like two or three if you want to. I know if you say one, if I've got my year ones to log onto a computer, that's a miracle. I'm not going to do it six times. I'm going to kind of condense it and use it in a short period. But there are units that are already done, already created with PowerPoint presentations and all of that. So you can pick up and go. 
And one thing I do like with this unit is it teaches them what the different buttons mean. It teaches them what an eraser looks like. It teaches them what a fill button looks like and just those basic skills. So when you come to do it later on at Key Stage 2, they've got a bit of an understanding. Um, then one more thing here, like I say, if you've got spheros, um, this is just a brilliant activity, which I did this in my fives and six and I absolutely loved it. This is what the spheros look like these little robotic balls um we used to get absolutely messy we used to use laptop boxes which is a really nice option so they don't drive paint all around your classroom um but uh we used to different lots of paint and they would literally drive or program if you wanted them to do some programming and draw it onto a piece of paper came up with some really nice uh, pictures at the end of it and again you can incorporate that into primary colors secondary colors if you want to but it's just another jackson pollock inspired piece of work there really um, another unit which is quite, ni quite nice is looking at pixels. Uh, again, if you're looking at computers and you want to do computing and how computers actually work, they all work in pixelated images. If you zoom right in, that's what you'll see. So just a bit of progression if you wanted to do uh, some different activities on pixels. There's some links here at Key Stage 1 if you want, which is just where they have got to look at precision. It introduces digital art about how it benefits, so it's less messy, then, you know, it's easier to undo and correct. These links here just take you to different things like this, which are quite nice for them to fill in. So it's just recreating different pieces of pixel art. It's like a bit of a game, you check it at the end, if it's not right, it'll ask them to correct. And then if you want to make some of your own pixel art, there's a website you can use here. Um, I'm going to quickly whiz through these slides and I more did it as slides here that if you want to screenshot what I've created and try it in your own class, then feel free to do so. Um, I didn't really want to waste time saying go on this app and try it, but I've just taken screenshots to show you the platform in an example that you could use in your classroom. So this image here is what I kind of created. Um, if you go into the slides on pixel art, you get these tools along the left hand side. Like I say, if you use them, they kind of get used to that this is a pencil, this is an eraser, this is a fill bucket. So on here, you've got this option to draw shapes. So again, if you want to take this as a lesson and screenshot it, do feel free. We've just drawn a shape. There's the fill bucket here to fill. And on the right hand side on pixel art, you've got all of your different colours. Um, it's quite nice then you could tie this into any topic. So again, tie it in with your topic like work. If you're if you're creating uh, a cover page for your topic, do it using digital art. All you've done here is use the shape box to create different shapes, use the fill box to fill them, colour palette here, you've got different shapes again, so a circle to draw a moon. And then what I like with this is you can draw in pixels, so it all works in squares. And on the right hand side here, you can choose how big you want them. So I changed the size to two, literally just did dots to draw the windows. OK, um, then the tool that's really nice on pixel art, just to kind of show you here, is the select tool. It's like paint, but a little bit easier, I think, pixel art. So if you copy and highlight a certain picture, you can then copy and paste it which is really nice for pupils again the benefits of doing it on digital art you're not going to have to draw it 10 times when you can actually just copy and paste what you've already done so here then what you see is copy and pasted all these pictures on uh this is my final piece i then copy and pasted the whole image and then i flipped it to create this just as a drawing so a really nice simple effective drawing um all made in pixels all quite simple so if you want to start talking about pixels and do a unit around that, you can. That's the best website that I found to create them. So obviously you've got this presentation, screenshot it if you want, have a go at doing it yourself. Uh, they also have on here, which I noticed is they've got stamps. So they've got different stuff on here. So if you're looking at game design or anything like that, they've got the Mario bricks, they've got the uh, Flappy Birds kind of, kind of styles, they've got the coins. So if you're tying it in there, you could kind of use that as they could create their own game background for something that they've been doing. Um, which ties into one more thing that I'm going to talk about, one different unit on that, um, is this is an app that I'm not going to talk about heavily because it's it kind of has a link to art, it's more computing. I might do some free cast communities on it because I absolutely love it. There's an app here called Bloxels. If you haven't heard of it, it's really worth a download. Um, certainly for computing, it is game design. So it's not coding, which is really nice. They don't have to code anything. They're designing their game through art skills, if you want. Uh, and one of the things they have to do is they have to create their character. Well, they have to create everything in the world. They have to create their background, they create their coins, they create their characters, they create their en enemies, and it makes a Super Mario style game. But I really like incorporating this as part of art, art design and technology and computer in one, because what you'll see here is they draw their character. And again, they've got their color palette here, they've got arrays, they've got copy and paste. Um, it's something I'm not gonna go into now, like I said, I'll probably do a future session, but they actually start to design everything through art. And down here, they start to animate it. So they can add second frames and they can start to make it move. Um, just on animation, 
again i'm not going to talk for ages on it because this could be computing and it, it's something you can touch on in art but if you have the opportunity to do animation it will tie into your art things there's there's a, there's two apps that i really would recommend and i like using i'm just going to see if this is a play this is something that i uh Hopefully you can see that there. I'll play that a couple of times. This is something that um, one of our year five students made on an iPad. So they drew this for themselves and it really incorporated uh, digital art and animation. So there's lots of stuff on animation where you can do stop frame animation using cameras and taking pictures. But I personally like to incorporate it into an art unit where they're actually doing drawing and they're actually doing sketching. So if you want to look into that, again, I'm not going to touch on it too much here because it's like this session could go on tangents in loads of different directions with different things. Um, but these are the two best apps that I would recommend in primary school. This was made on an app called Flipper Clip. It is really simple to use in the simplest sense. They can just do stick mends. Uh, there's a what I used to do on the first one with my children is I used to do a bouncy ball when I'm teaching them the concept of drawing and onion skin and layering. We do a bouncy ball to make it uh, move across the screen. And this one here, Folioscope, is quite simple. Again, it doesn't give them too many colours. It's not too hard to kind of get their head around. So if you've got children where they've done score drawing or they've even done tracing, they could use Adobe uh, Illustrator and trace their, their background image and then interpret and, and put this into their, their app. But it's really nice for some effective animations. If you've got people at Key Stage 2 who can draw, um, it's going to take them on that next step about how they can actually then make GIFs or animate their drawing. So I would really recommend that as a as a unit maybe for them. Um, just with animation again, if you want to, oh, gone too far. If you want to look at this um, as a unit, the NCC do their own unit. So this is one where you've got six lessons. They've done it in year three. The only thing I will say with this unit, if you want to look into it, it doesn't incorporate those apps. I think those apps are the best ones that I've ever used and I've used them for years in school. Uh, what it does do on here is it, it has a stick man drawing, but they take pictures. So it combines that computing and that photography. And then it also does stuff like this. So where they're moving it more physically moving with taking cameras. So computing heads on, if you're in here, it does work in the animation. But what I really like is using those simple iPad apps, which really take them having to draw, think about their drawing, think about their composition, and then actually interpreting that into an animation. So you've got those options there if you want to do that. Uh, and then lastly, I think the last unit I'm going to talk about is just uh, graphic design, if you kind of want to look at that. So um, this is just a really nice, simple activity where we made emojis. We use an app called Assembly App. So the logo is here on the, on the iPads. And um, basically it is where they just get different shapes. So it starts to fill into vector drawing and stuff like that. And uh, it's really simple that it was just, they had different shapes to make different images. They had their color palette at the bottom. So it wasn't so much drawing as in sketching, but it was manipulating different shapes to create something, which I really like. You can do it on Microsoft Word if you wanted to as well. We do, I do a unit after when, when I'm teaching Word and I'm teaching the basics on Word of input in shapes and input in um, different things. I say, can you make a smiley face? So we're actually starting to look at layering. We're starting to look at bringing to front and sending to back and stuff stuff like that. Um, they need to think about the stages in which they're going to order it. And what you get then is you get some nice different things like this. So these are just their emojis. We also looked into actually about how it, art is vis visual communication. You can't have any shape, you, you know, emojis is a really nice to do that actually. How are you going to go across how you're thinking in an emoji? So getting them to think about the way that they're going to display their picture without using any words. Um, so that's a nice option there. If you want to use the app, it kind of a free app and it just has shapes and they can do that and kind of layer on top. And then it feeds into a year five unit, which is quite nice. So if you think, yeah, that's something that's quite nice. This year five unit is vector drawing. So there's six lessons on here about layers and objects and how you can use shapes to kind of create different pieces of art. Yeah, Wendy, you got a question? <laughs> yeah, we have a question from Matthew just asking, what is the Blocks animation app called? So it's called Bloxels. Um, so B L. O X E L S, I think Bloxels. Um, there's two versions of it. There's a Bloxels game that you can play, and then there's Bloxels Edu, which is like an education version. Uh, I personally have just used the game in there. Um, if you want any more information, you can obviously, I think I might do a cast. Well, you, Wendy's going to love me. I think I might do another casting on it because it is a brilliant one used in schools. Uh, it's a really nice way to teach game design, and they create all of their levels on Super Mario. So the children, it's the most hooked I've ever had a class, and I've used it from key, from year three up to year six. But they make all their animations, they make all their figures, they make their own coins, they make them spin. So it really incorporates all those art skills and certainly pixel pixel drawing. Um, but then they take it into a game, and we do it as a massive evaluation unit. They play each other's. We look at actually how 
game designs are made. If it's too hard, you're going to put your, your player off, you know, and they have different levels. So, yeah, it's really worth looking into. If you, I've got some lessons on it. So if you want to tweet me or anything, I can send over some resources. But, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think Matthew put edu.bloxallbuilder.com. Yeah, yeah, that's that right? right. Yeah. Cool. I'm definitely going to take you up on that offer of um, presenting at a CAS community. Definitely one of my communities. Yeah. yeah I love it though. It is a brilliant app. So I'll happily talk about that. I'd love that. Cool. Um, so, yeah, so kind of nearly finished. The last thing I want to say, there's just a few apps and then I'm pretty much done. So it's good timing. Um, the, just literally three apps that, again, I thought you could kind of use quite nicely in an art classroom. Um, this one is called Handy Art Reference Tool. Um, again, I was thinking more probably secondary school than primary school, but if you want them to look at drawing um, parts of bodies, which are quite nice for getting in detail, like I remember at school having to draw hands to then look at shading and look at perspective. Uh, this app just have different hands, feet and heads and stuff like that, different features. So it's quite nice to use this. What you can do is zoom in, zoom out, rotate, so they can get a, get a vision of what they want to draw and then screenshot it rather than having to take photos. Uh, and then two other apps I like, this uh, grid hashtag, uh, it allows you to put any photo in and then put a grid on top, which obviously you can do on camera when you're taking it on an iPad, but it means you can get in your own picture. So twofold that you can use this as. What I used to do when I used to teach uh, my musicals topic, I used to want to cut a musical poster down into different grids. Then I'd give each child a grid to draw and we'd put it back at the end like a jigsaw to see if actually we looked at perspective and we looked at um, breaking up the image into sections right. But what I ended up used to do was print off an A3 paper, having to get my guillotine, having to measure and cut it right this app just saves you all that so you can print off a3 you can put the grid on and then you can just chop along there so it's really nice for doing that it's also really nice if you want the children on their again download this app have it on their ipads and then they can start to look at perspective themselves so they can have this grid and go right then they can split their page into the same grid and they can look at i'm drawing this section of the eye right now so what have i got to do where is it going to sit in my grid so it's just a really nice way of layering a grid on top of an image for the children to use or yourself as a teacher to take it you know cut down a little bit of time if you're wanting to do that and then the last one which you'll have seen there's a wealth of these ones but pop light pop art light i really like um you see this as an andy warhol kind of unit so this is just a really simple app where you can upload a photo take a photo and then play around with different colors and different uh, different things like that to again get a nice easy effect at the end where they can make their own one so we used to do this twofold i used to do it with um, I used to sit with a camera, so they'd take a selfie and we'd print it off in black and white. So then they'd use felt tips or they'd use a different medium to create an actual version of an Andy Warhol print. And then we'd look at it on a pop art and we'd use an app and we'd create a second version. And then we'd start to evaluate, you know, the differences in time, the differences in effect. Would it be better to use digital media as opposed to actually using physical media to create a piece? And again, it tied in our artist links, looking at Andy Warhol as part of our pop art topic there as our focus. So yeah, that is kind of it. That's my last app that I'm going to talk about. Um, hopefully you found that useful. Like I said, I've, I've thrown a few different ways, main, mainly more about how to integrate technology. The stuff at the beginning, using those iPads as a way to layer and a way to do tracing to kind of, in those instances, you can, add, you can teach art in a different way. It's stuff that you can't do in medium. You can't have layer upon layer when you're actually drawing physically. So it allows you a, a completely different aspect to show the children with their art. And then um, obviously some of the different units there and a, and a few apps to kind of take back into your classroom. So yeah, so hopefully you found that useful. The handout is there. Everything that I've talked about is on the handle, uh, on the handout. If you do do anything in class, use the uh, Cast Inspire. It'd be great to kind of see some of the stuff that you're doing. Um, put it on Twitter. And if you're not on Twitter, please do get on there and have a look. I see loads of ideas, not ends that I take into my classrooms and I use. I saw one the other week, which was using Charlie Mackesy, the book, the boy, the mole, uh, the ho the fox and the hare. And the horse, sorry. I saw some some people doing some digital art on Keynote and I took that into my classroom last week and did it. But that was all from an idea that I'd saw on Twitter. So if you're not on there, it's a really good place to share good practice. So yeah. Thank you so much. We've had some really positive comments in the chat. Um, I think people have really appreciated what you've been, what you've said uh, this afternoon in this webinar and some fantastic ideas. So just a massive thank you for presenting. And thanks to everyone who's joined us uh, today. And as Rachel was saying, can I encourage you to share your personal highlights via social media? Definitely get on Twitter if you're not already on there and on the CAS website. Um, and again, the, the hashtag for this uh, programme is hashtag 
Kaz Inspire 20 and we'd love to see um, any of these ideas that you take back to your classroom if you can share them with us that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, I just wanted to also flag up um, a community meeting that's coming up um, soon which is on the 15th of October. You mentioned uh, in a all of the things that you said this afternoon, you did mention education for a connected world. And um, we've got Project Evolve coming to present and share their wealth of resources. Um, so have a look out for that uh, community meeting that's coming up uh, next week if you're interested in uh, having a look at those fantastic resources. Um, and at the end of this webinar, a short survey will appear on the screen and we'd be grateful if you could take a minute to complete the survey. We hope to see you at the next session in the Chasm's Fire series, which is on Wednesday, the 14th of October. And uh, Tim Wilson will be hosting that session and um, it's focusing on teaching computing without computers, so an unplugged session. Um, please do continue to spread the word about CAS Inspire and thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.